Hey, what's going on guys? Uh, coming at you with another updated deck profile and today I'll be showing you guys my barrier statues. Uh, so I know I've done this deck like a hundred times by now, but as you can probably see by the video here, I do have a new addition I want to go over really quick, which is uh, Pot Desires. A uh, big shout out to Chris Horn for giving me a good deal on these two. Uh, really happy to have them. And with uh, the new addition of Pot, Pot Desires to my collection, I uh, do be expecting some more updated deck profiles uh, with the inclusion of Pot Desires. So I'll try to make this deck profile a bit quick since I've gone through this deck so many times, explained my card choices so many times. So this is kind of a quick update for you guys. All right, let's zoom in here. Okay, so Monster Lance pretty much the same. Uh, we still have the free Fossil Dina. Uh, the free barrier statue, the drought, uh, not only are both these guys earth, which is good with uh, Gaia power and just in general for the combo of like tw uh, barrier statue, the drought plus rebirth to bring back fossil Dina, uh, but also there's very few relevant uh, earth decks out there. Uh, so that's why I do maximize out on the earth guy. Uh, and then for my other barrier statue, I uh, still just playing the uh, small lineup of seven monsters. Um, I decided to switch it up from the water one to the wind one. Uh, granted, I still am kind of fearful of the Magic Spectre matchup, uh, probably one of this deck's worst matchups, but at the same time with uh, Paleozoics coming out uh, with uh, Tria Toad now being out, or Totally Awesome if you so prefer that name, um, there's going to be a lot of different uh, water uh, decks or just water themed monsters going around, so I didn't really want to run into that with uh, you know, the Barrier Statue of the Drought, so that's why I decided to go, or Barrier Statue of the Torrent, sorry. Uh, so that is why I decided to go with the wind, uh, just because I think it's a little less relevant than the water. Uh, so for spells, we have the standard free card demise, free pod duality, and then the double pod desires. Uh, I see a lot of the topping builds playing free, and I understand why. Uh, it's a powerful card you want to see as early as possible. But at the same time, with how slow this deck is at dealing damage to win the game, uh, you don't really want to resolve two or three most of the time. Uh, because that means you're banishing half your deck and basically you're reducing yourself down to 10 turns or less to win the game Which can be kind of hard for this deck to do when you're poking with just a thousand attack point and 1200 attack point monsters most of the time uh, So that's why I personally play two plus I don't want to clog with multiples in my hand So I think two is the right number I decided to cut the upstart goblin because again the thousand life points you give uh, can potentially be an extra turn you're giving your opponent and You know it pot of desires is just so much better than upstart. So it was easy to replace uh, then we have the Free Moon Mirror Shield. Basically the reason why this deck actually functions uh, allows your small monsters to be able to beat over anything in battle. Uh, it makes it to where they're pretty much indestructible by battle as long as Moon Mirror Shield is equipped to it. Uh, plus its ability to recycle itself is really, really good. Uh, then we're still playing the one Gaia Power and the one Seal Warrior Calcus as the field spells. Um, you could consider a Dark Sanctuary or a Necker Valley if you want, but I really like Gaia Power because uh, it's basically like a second seal to power up your earth monsters. Um, and the reason I play a second field spell is so I have a card enough out of my hand for uh, card demise. Uh, then for the final spell, we have the one Regeki. Uh, for traps, we have the Sander Triple Dark Bribe. Um, I like this over Huge Revolution is over or say Magic Drain uh, because this negates uh, any spell or trap that can give you a problem. Um, also, with Magic Drain, you're not worried about them negating it uh, compared to Magic Drain. And Huge Revolution is over. Uh, it's only relevant for like Twin Twister or a Dark Horror Regeki, which hits two monsters. Um, so again, that's why I prefer Dark Bride. Um, even though the opponent gets to draw a card, I feel like it's not too likely they're going to draw into the similar um, out that they just used um, with the one card they drew. So that's why I prefer Dark Bride. Uh, then we have the Free Fan Knight Sword. Uh, still playing a Free Powerful Rebirth. Uh, highly considered cutting it to two, but I feel like with Pot Desires in here, it's important to have the third one because there are going to be times where your opponent's able to get over your, um, um, your Barrier Statue or Fossil Dina and you need a way to bring it back to prevent them from going off on you. Or just bring back, like, say, a Fossil Dina when you have Drought on board to go for extra damage. Uh, still playing the Free Story Mirror Force as our battle trap. Um, you know, I've explained that many times. Uh, then the Solemn Quartet with a Triple Solemn Strike and one Solemn Warning. Uh, double Floodgate Trap Hole. And then finally the one Bottomless to round out the main deck. Um, of course, it's 40 cards. It is uh, 7 monsters, 14 spells, and 19 traps. Uh, for the side deck, uh, of course, no extra deck for this. Not really necessary. Uh, we have two Lecter. Uh, this is here for the Magic Spectre matchup, trying to negate uh, Kieran and their other Magic Spectre monsters that um, you know can't be targeted or destroyed by card effects, because that deck can really give th this deck a problem. So having Lecter in our scale to negate those effects is really, really key. Uh, the three MST for mostly Roll Decree. Uh, double Dark Hole uh, if we're forced to go second and need to get rid of our opponent's big board. 
Uh, same with Swords of Concealing Light. Uh, this is especially good against Mata Specters for flipping down their monsters, um, preventing them from flipping back face up, so we can actually get over to Kirin and other annoying monsters. Uh, double Anti-Spell Fragrance, if we're going first against the uh, Pendulum matchup, just another thing that locks them out of the game. Uh, the Double Chaos Trap Hole, good against the Light and Dark based decks that are going around right now, but uh, most of this is here for Denko Seka in case we think we're going to side that against them. Because uh, with the two Chaos Trap Hole and one Solemn Morning, it uh, gives us three possible outs to um, Denko Seka if they're going second. Uh, then for the final side card, we had a two Full House. Uh, this is here against other uh, backer heavy decks that like to stack five. Um, and, you know, Full House is a good card for taking advantage of that. Um, so that is it for this updated deck profile of my uh, Barrier Statue Demise deck. Um, again, I hope you guys enjoyed it. Please remember to like, comment, and subscribe. And for these videos going forward, what I'll try to do is uh, in the description, instead of just listing off the um, like the build for the deck profile, the main deck cards, extra deck, side decks, so, so on and so forth, um, I'll just take a picture of what I have laid out here um, so it's easily accessible and you can just kind of look at it for a brief second. And hopefully the picture will be high quality enough to where you can see all the cards. Um, so again, thank you guys so much for watching and I'll catch you next time.